So a first question is, what is consciousness? There's no easy definition because unfortunately there's no consensus in the literature about what consciousness is, if it exists, how to define it, etc. But one way of getting clear about, at least starting to get clear about what consciousness is, is to make a distinction between personal level versus subpersonal level cognitive phenomena. So right now there are all sorts of really complex and interesting things happening in the brain and central nervous system that allow me to have the current experience that I'm having of you, of this room, of the things around us. However, I'm not aware of these processes. These are things that are unfolding in a non-conscious way in parts of my brain and central nervous system. Consciousness, on the other hand, refers to events and processes that I'm aware of, uh, things that are arising at a first personal level of experience or awareness. Um, so for example, I'm aware of what it tastes like to drink single malt scotch, to look at a sunset, to remember uh, an experience I had as a child. These experiences are conscious in the sense that, as Ned Block puts it, there's something that it's like to have them. They have a subjective character, or a phenomenal character to them, as, as philosophers sometimes put it. They also have what, what is sometimes referred to as a self-reflexive character. In other words, they don't just happen, they happen for a subject or a self. So conscious states not only have a what it's like quality, they at the same time seem to point back towards or indicate a subject, a subject who has them, who owns them, and who experiences the world through them, so to speak. In that sense, consciousness then refers to both experiences with a phenomenal character or a subjective character, as well as experiences with an inherently self-reflexive character. And that is philosophically important because consciousness and the notion of self-reflexivity seems to point towards or disclose a self, a subject at the receiving end of consciousness. And that, of course, is a very thin or formal way of thinking about the relationship between consciousness and self. Uh, we might understand that a bit more clearly by contrasting it with another way of thinking about the self. Psychologists and philosophers often talk about the narrative self. Uh, this is uh, the self that emerges through stories, stories that we tell about ourselves and stories that others tell about us. Uh, it's a remarkable fact about the human brain that as soon as, almost uh, very quickly after we're born, we start talking. And as soon as we start talking, we start telling stories. And very quickly we tell our own stories, we make up stories, and we begin to participate in the stories, the narratives of others. And so very gradually over time and through interacting with other people, a narrative self emerges. That is a structurally richer and more complex conception of self than is the, the experiential or conscious self that I was talking about uh, initially. There are, of course, many other ways of thinking about the self, but I think this notion of the minimal self, its relation to conscious experience, and then the narrative self are pretty central for understanding uh, both the nature of consciousness as well as the relationship between consciousness and the self.